Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how even a basic understanding of data structures can significantly improve the performance of your code using a real world example. In this case it's going to be a text analysis program and will make it 30 times faster just by changing a single line of code. As a self-taught programmer I know it can be kind of intimidating to learn about data structures. Uh, it seems like it's not just programming that you're learning, it's computer science and it has all these fancy terms like big O notation, stuff like that. Um, it doesn't help that a lot of coding interviews kind of uh, seem like contrived questions. They don't seem like they have any real world use and it kind of makes programmers reflexively hate anything to do with data structures or algorithms. In reality, the basics aren't that hard to learn and they're really worth it for boosting the performance of your code in some cases. The biggest problem I think is that the people teaching it, they use a lot of jargon and they use unrealistic examples out of a textbook rather than something realistic. So let's run this code real quick and I'll show you the end result. And you can see here, so with the initial data structure that like I would have used myself as a beginner, it takes one second. And when we change the data structure used, we can see we get a 30 times boost in speed. That might not seem like a huge deal for a small program like this with a small amount of data, but if you kind of extrapolate that to a larger data set, it's the difference between a script taking five minutes to run and three hours to run. So it can end up being a pretty big deal. So now let's go over this program kind of line by line, and I'll explain why we see that big difference in performance. So this example is actually based on, it's a simplified version of a project I was working on where we were bringing in text data from a lot of different places, social media, um, websites, all sorts of stuff, and then processing it. So what this program here is doing is first we import this time module so that we can time it and see how fast it's running. And then we open up a basic text file. We break that file into um, just a list of lines or an array of lines. We then remove white space and empty lines from the text so we don't have any um, useless data. And if we scroll down, this is where the big difference is. So when I was a beginner programmer, I would just use a list because I have a list of um, words in this case that I'd want to filter out. So these could be for text analysis, they'd be called what stop words that they don't really mean anything if we're trying to determine what people are talking about on social media or whatever. Um, there's certain words, parentheses, commas, and just basic words like the, it, that don't tell us anything, so it's kind of useless to process them. You could also have, if you're trying to, if you had a form or something, you wanted to censor out certain words, you could have a list of swear words and stuff like that in here and do something similar. The big difference here is between an array, which is what this is, and a set data structure. And I'll go over specifically um, what the difference is. We, I have a diagram that we can look at and I'll go over it. But then underneath here what's going on is we go through each line in that cleaned up list that we made and then we look at each word inside that line. And then for each word we compare to this list and if we find a match you could then censor or remove that word but we're just gonna break. So it has to loop through every word inside this text that we have then we end and we do this, or end time we subtract, and that'll give us how many seconds have elapsed since we started up here. And then we do the same thing here, but this time we can use that set data structure, take advantage of the basically nature of that data structure to more efficiently compare and look for the words and see if they exist in that data structure. So we've ran this code once. Let's look at, um, if we make this shorter, we can see uh, we'll notice an effect here on our code. So first we're going to start, we're going to remove all these extra words here. Cut those out so there's only two in here. So if we save that and rerun, you'll notice that when it's a short list, it's only a two times difference in speed. And you'll notice um, something pretty crucial is that while our list time dropped a ton, the second um, the second run through using the set it's about the same so what you take away from that is that no matter how many words we have when we have that set data structure it's almost always the same and that's just some fluctuation um, probably in my computer and how it runs it and processes it 
but you notice a huge difference here in the list and the more so we're gonna paste back and this time we'll take only about half and if we run that again we'll see a similar thing where it's kind of a linear increase over time that the more words we have in this list it continuously gets slower so here again we can see that the set data structure is pretty much the same it's right in that range of um, 0.4 to 0.32 so it's almost always staying in that same range but this difference in speed continues to grow so the first time was 30 times faster with the full length list and with the only two it was only two times faster and if we go back to the full list and run it again we can see it's right again near 30 and it's always going to land just by kind of some random chance it's going to be between 27 to 30 times faster just because of that data structure. To help you visualize what's going on exactly, let's head to this picture and zoom in a little bit. So this is initially our array. So this is what a lot of beginners would use, what I've used in the past when I didn't know anything about data structures. So the thing about an array is that you have to iterate with these arrows. So you start at the beginning, and then to check if an element exists, you have to first look in this one, then if that doesn't match, so this is what's going on in our for loop here. So right here we're saying, we're looking through each word and we're saying, if our current word is inside this array and we have to one by one go through this, and if we find a match, then we can remove it or do whatever we want. So that is, if we go to what you probably heard about big O notation, this would be O N. So for as many elements, n elements we have in this list, we have to, um, on average, potentially go all the way to the end of the list. So big O notation is worst case. So the worst case scenario is that the word is in our array and we have to go all the way to the end. And actually, if the word isn't in our array, we still have to go all the way and check every element just to be sure that maybe it's the last element. So that's very um, time consuming. It's not an efficient way to find an element and that's why it runs so much slower. So if we go down to our set data structure, the way this works is that we have these elements, so these words, the, a, it, and what happens is behind the scenes what this thing does is it has a hash function which converts this instead of being this letters, it essentially creates a um, way to identify it and then it sends it to an actual index array behind there. So the in this case it gets sent into this hash function and it will get placed in index array at zero and then when we go down here and say we look for if our word is in that set what it does is the word we pass it it also gets hashed and it would since it's the same word so if we're look checking for the it would also and it would end up in the same spot and this would have like a value saying that yes this word exists here and that is in big O notation, it would be an O1 lookup. It's an instantaneous lookup because it's either we check this one spot and it's there or it's not, instead of having to check every single spot in this entire array. And that's where we get that massive difference in performance. It's just a better way for this particular task of working with this data. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to do a quick real world example so people could kind of dip their toes and see the value in general of learning these data structures. I'll be doing um, pretty much all the most common data structures and algorithms in depth in future videos. So if you're interested in a more deep dive into this stuff, be sure to hit subscribe. Um, if this video helped you out, make sure to hit like as well. And if you're confused about anything, leave a comment and I'll try to help you out.